How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. And welcome back to another episode of the Monthly Otaku Collection, the show that I do at the end of every single month where I go over the anime, the manga, the merch, and other types of cool otaku stuff that I didn't have enough time to talk about in a video for this month. It is the end of October, which means it is the end of spooky season, and uh, Halloween is just around the corner. So I figured, as you can see in the title and thumbnail of this video, we are mostly going to be covering a bunch of spooky, scary, horror anime, manga, all that kind of stuff today. So if if you're a big fan of the horror genre, then welcome aboard. And if you're not a big fan of the horror genre, don't worry. Hopefully I'll be able to talk about and recommend you guys some brand new stuff that even you non-horror manga and anime fans can also get into. So stick around for that. Thank God uh, it is getting way cooler now here in Japan. I mean, I feel we just went straight from summer to winter like overnight. Now that the winter season is on the roll, I can finally wear some anime drip that I've been storing for the past year, so it feels good. Speaking of on the roll though, and I mention this in every monthly otaku collection, but have you guys checked out my second channel? I've been more active than ever over on my second channel right now. We are just around 400,000 subscribers as of me recording. In fact, we might have hit 400,000 subscribers if you're seeing this video, so thank you if that's the case. I've been doing a lot of different kinds of content over there, and I've been having a lot of fun over there just kind of making whatever I feel like, any kind of interesting topics or anything like that. And you guys have been enjoying it as well, so I would highly recommend you go over there, check it out if you haven't, links down in the description below. But before we jump right into the otaku stuff, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> It's October! The spooky month! Ghosts and goblins and your cousin's crappy Halloween costume are all terrifying things, but if there's one thing that is more terrifying than all of those combined... It's your internet privacy at risk. Hackers, spies, and corporate data collectors are out there to get your information. But luckily, I'm here to give you all a pleasant Halloween, thanks to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Not only does ExpressVPN reroute and encrypt 100% of your network data to help protect your online privacy, but it can also help you get around geo restrictions to change my location online. So now I can access sites like Crunchyroll to watch horror anime for the Halloween season and watch Netflix horror movies like The Wind that aren't normally available in my country. Not only is it fast, reliable, and super easy to use, but I use it on all my devices, phones, tablets, routers, TVs even, so I can watch everything on the big screen. Plus, ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by TechRadar and countless other tech reviewers. So if you want to turn the internet from a spooky, scary place to a fun, happy place, then make sure to use my link expressvpn.com slash anime man to get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Back to the show. All right, let's start off with the horror anime. Yes, I did in fact watch anime this season. In fact, I'll be talking about quite a brand new series that has just come out this season. A horror anime that I was definitely looking forward to checking out. Now, I've seen a lot of different horror anime out there. Some scary, some absolutely not scary. But I think this horror anime might just be one of the most unique entries into the genre. And it is miyurko chan I know some of you guys have probably started watching this, uh, and it's quite brand new. I think there's only about two or three episodes that are out so far, but I watched the first two episodes because, again, I had heard of the manga, hadn't actually read it yet, and uh, I heard that there was quite a bit of a, a murmur, a stir in the anime community concerning this particular series. So, considering that it is spooky season, I figured I would give it a go and give you my first impressions on the first couple of episodes. And uh, let me tell you, this is... A very strange horror anime. It's almost like a parody on horror anime, but at the same time, it's trying to be a serious horror anime as well. I can't, again, compare it to the original manga source material because I haven't read it, but just from watching the anime, there were some scenes that I thought were genuinely unnerving, especially that bus stop scene. I don't know who directed it, but there were some directorial shots that straight up reminded me of, like, an Ari Aster film. The use of, like, silence instead of these foreboding, now very cliche types of booming sounds to convey something scary has happened, instead just opting to use silence to show something really creepy. Definitely very Ari Aster vibes, and I feel a lot more effective, especially in the horror anime format as well. The artwork is absolutely brilliant. Passion really kicked it out of the park when it comes to not just giving off the creepy vibes and stuff like that, but also just the character designs are really nice. But around episode two was where I started to kind of scratch my head because there were just like, you know, terrifying ghost scenes, but at the same time, and around the same level of terrifyingly uh, sexualized scenes as well. I don't exactly remember the scene, but there was one where one minute they're showing this like severed head ghost, which is quite creepy. And literally the next shot is like, a panty shot? I don't know if they're trying to go for like the, the comedy route or they're just trying to be ironic in the sense that uh, they really love to 
over-sexualize the main two girls. And look, I'm not gonna come out here and say, how dare you over-sexualize anime girls. But I just feel in the context of horror, it's still a little bit jarring. I mean, it's not the first time we've seen a horror etchy combination. Look at things like High School of the Dead and literally every NSFL handy. But I thought it was an interesting combination. I can see why a lot of people are kind of talking about it. Also, am I the only one that thinks that the opening to Miyeruko-chan is very similar to the opening to Mario Holic. The use of the colors and the direction and just the chaotic good vibes, but also dark undertones hiding within the good vibes definitely reminded me of the Mario Holic opening, which is good because I fucking loved Mario Holic as a series. That opening is an absolute banger. So more openings like that, please, anime industry. Overall, I'm looking forward to the next couple of episodes and interested to see how they can evolve this strange comedy, etchy, horror combination, because it's, I don't think it's a, a, a mix of genres that we have quite seen in the anime industry as of late, but who knows, it might end up being something really interesting. So if you would like to check out a, a different type of horror anime, I'd recommend Miedical Chunk, give it a go. All right, up next, let's talk about the horror manga. Now, if there is anything scarier than horror anime, it is definitely horror manga. I, I think I've mentioned this in videos in the past, but I, for one, am a fan of horror anime, of course, but I think if you're wanting that really creepy, spooky vibe off of horror media, then I think horror manga does it better than any horror anime could. And I figured, again, because it's the Halloween season, I would kind of dig through into my horror manga catalog and give you guys two series. But let's start off with an absolute classic, and it is probably the forefather of modern horror manga, and is a series that I think a lot of modern horror manga has definitely been influenced by in one way or another, and that is Ito Junji's Tomie. Now, if you're a fan of Ito Junji, or if you're a fan of horror manga, you would know this shit is legendary status. If Umezu Kazo is the grandfather of horror manga, Ito Junji is like his son. Ito Junji now is quite infamous in the manga world with works such as Uzumaki, Gyo, and other short stories that are absolutely terrifying, but the one that started it all is Tomie, and I figured I would give Tomie a shout out in this video and give it a little introduction to you guys who want to, I guess, take your first step into the possibilities that the horror manga world has to offer to you. The general concept of Tomie is you have this girl, on the cover right here, known as Tomie, who gets killed in a really brutal and quite devastating way. He, she basically gets killed by her entire class, and because of that, she has become a vengeful spirit, or rather something otherworldly, in that after her classmates accidentally, quote-unquote, kill her and cut up her body into, like, 50 pieces and to scatter it all around Japan to hide the evidence. Basically, her vengeful spirit makes it so that from those cut up pieces grows another Tomie. Basically, she starts to clone herself with her parts and kind of becomes this alluring witch of a character where any guy that sees Tomie immediately falls in love with her, falls into her mind tricks, her mind trap, and commits horrible crimes and kills people and does really fucked up stuff. And there is a number of people who are trying to get to the bottom of it. There are a number of people whose lives have been devastated by these Tomie clones. Or, and at the end of it all, we really don't know what Tomie is. Uh, there really is no like concrete conclusion as to what Tomie is, why she became this way. But that is, and for those of you who have read Junji Ito uh, manga series, you would know, that is like the cream of the crop when it comes to Ito Junji manga. There is no concrete conclusion to his stories, and that's what makes it so terrifying. It's that fear of the uncertain, the fear of the unknown, that really creeps up on you the more you read their manga. And Tomie has some absolutely legendary scenes. Uh, there is one scene, I'm sure you've seen it in like you know, forum posts and on t-shirts and stuff like that, and on art boards and stuff like that, but there is a this picture from the Tomia manga that has become absolutely infamous, and it is, I think, out of any uh, Ito Junji body horror macabre type of imagery, this Tomie panel still to this day has to be one of the most gruesome and brutal and just awe-inspiring of anything that Ito Junji has made, in my humble opinion. And Tomia, yes, while it is a series, quote-unquote, it is more so a collection of short stories revolving around this Tomie girl 
who keeps cloning herself and keeps bringing devastation to every life that runs into one of her clones. And again, if you'd like to see the beginnings of the father, now what is considered the father of modern horror manga, Ito Junji, how his art has evolved and how he had such an amazing grasp of body horror and macabre horror and just very supernatural, uncertain, mind-bending, manipulating horror, then I think Tomie is a great first entry to anyone who wants to get into not just Ito Junji's stuff, but just into the horror manga genre in general. And the second horror manga that I would like to show off to you guys is one that I've had on the back burner for quite a while. I've, I actually bought all of the volumes of this quite a while ago. And by quite a while ago, I mean like three or four years ago. But it wasn't until recently when I decided that I was going to kind of dig up more of the underground lesser known horror manga for this video that I remembered that I had all these volumes. And I thought, oh, I haven't actually read this yet. You know what? Perfect. Let me give it a go. If it sucks, I'll find something else. But maybe this might be good because this author does have a very good back catalog of great material. And sweet Lord baby Jesus, I was not expecting this manga to be so fucking amazing. And it is almost a crime that this manga is not talked about more than it is. Of course, this isn't like the most underground horror manga ever. There are people who obviously have found it, have been talking about it, especially because the author has gotten more famous since this series. But it is simply titled Happiness. This is a manga created by one Oshimi Shuzo. If you're familiar with the underground manga world, then you might have recognized that name. Oshimi Shuzo is most famously known to be the creator of one Akunohana, or the Flowers of Evil, which got a anime adaptation which became quite uh, dividing in the anime world, uh, but everyone who read the original manga can argue that it is an incredible, incredible psychological horror series. And Happiness is done by the same guy, and uh, really takes the whole fucked up factor to an 11. Basic premise follows a high school kid who gets bullied a lot. He has these glasses on, he's kind of like the, the, the school nerd. He really wishes for another life. He really wishes for some happiness. And one night as he is walking back from school, he is suddenly attacked by a vampire girl and supposedly dies by getting his blood sucked from his neck. But for some reason, the vampire girl, instead of killing our main character, decides to let him live, which in turn turns him also into a vampire. And from there, as he slowly starts to realize that his body is changing, he doesn't like to eat regular foods. His thirst for blood grows more and more to the point where he almost kills his entire family. But at the same time, these vampiric powers also give him the chance to change his life for the better. He beats up the school bully. In fact, he befriends the school bully from respect. And it seems like his life is getting happier and happier until he realizes that he is still this vampire and he has to decide whether to continue fighting the urge to kill someone and live on as a normal human being who has now gained a little bit more happiness than before the attack or to leave all of that life behind and live in solitude as a vampire. Now, just hearing that premise, I know what most of you are thinking. This sounds like Tokyo Ghoul. And not gonna lie, when I was looking up on YouTube of uh, any person who has actually read and it was talking about this manga, most, if not every single video I saw said the exact same thing. And not gonna lie, that infuriated the fuck out of me. Because as much as I love the Tokyo Ghoul manga, from what I've read, I haven't read all of it, obviously, as much as I love what I have read of the Tokyo Ghoul manga and how solid of a manga Tokyo Ghoul is, I have to specify this, otherwise the Tokyo Ghoul fans are get on, gonna get on my ass for the next thing I'm about to say. Comparing Tokyo Ghoul to this manga is like comparing apples and oranges, because Tokyo Ghoul is very much a shonen type of series of the same take with the Kagune and the power-ups and the wacky main villains and all that kind of stuff, which is amazing on its own, don't get me wrong. Like, the action sequences and the, the Kagune and the weapons and stuff like that, fucking dope concept. But happiness doesn't have any of that. In fact, it is probably one of the most grounded to reality vampire psychological horror series that I have ever read. Because once you finish reading this manga, the meaning of the title happiness completely 
changes. It does a full 180 when you witness what some, if not all of the characters in this manga have to go through to even get one step closer to their own happiness. There are some scenes that are absolutely fucked, like so fucked to the point that again, Tokyo Ghoul wishes it could get this fucked up in concept, but I don't think it ever will. Honestly, if I had to compare this manga to another manga, I would actually compare this manga something closer to Fire Punch by Fujimoto Tatsuki. Just based on the whole concept, the psychological concept of what it means to be human. What does happiness mean? What is helping others to help yourself mean? What does all of that psychological aspects and physiological aspect mean to a character that has endured every type of hell and has endured some of the most messed up shit that has happened to their lives that is completely out of their control. Oshimi Shuzo is a really interesting manga artist because he definitely relies more on silent panels than he does dialogue to express emotion. For anyone who has actually read any other stuff by Oshimi Shuzo, such as the aforementioned Akunohana and the more recent Chino Wadachi, is also, which is also a fucking amazing psychological horror, his Facial expressions are some of the most creepy things to come out in all of manga. Like, I was just talking about, like, the macabre body horror that Ito Junji has. No, that, like, that is a different type of scary. Some of the things that are happening to these characters are just genuinely fucked up. And there is no other way to explain that. So, if anything, I would be really careful when going into this manga because, uh, yeah. It gets really messed up. And there are so many twists and turns throughout the story, and there are so many plot twists throughout the story that I genuinely did not see coming because I had no idea where this story was going until it went in that direction. But I did not expect that direction to be off a cliff. Crashing down and then rising up again like a phoenix to do it all again. For a manga that is called Happiness, there is not a single time that you will feel happiness right from the beginning all the way up until the end. There is nothing happy about this manga, but without giving the spoilers away, obviously, because I want you guys to experience this blind, you will, I think, have a pretty good understanding of why Oshimi Shizu decided to call this series happiness, and the definition of the word happiness is going to be very different when you finish reading this manga. Bottom line, uh, this manga was fucking amazing. Uh, I, I'm really kicking myself that it took me this long to finally read it, because I really did just completely undermine Oshimi Shuzo. I thought, you know, he, he wouldn't be able to pull off a story like this, but goddamn did he pull off this story. Happiness Right Now has 10 volumes. It is already finished series, so you can read it all in one go. I read this all in like one day and it was absolutely brilliant. I would actually recommend you read it all in one go if you would like to fully experience this story. And I do believe as of right now, it is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated and underappreciated and under talked about horror manga today. So yeah, I'm giving a lot of praises to this because this is a great fucking horror manga. Definitely give it a go. All right, but last and certainly not least, let's do the monthly figurine giveaway brought to you guys by the lovely folks over at Tokyo Otaku Mode. And of course, again, with the Halloween theme, I had to give you guys something that was also Halloween theme for a figurine, but luckily it is definitely the cutest thing that you will see throughout this entire video. And it is... You guys like ReZero? You guys like Ram? Of course you do. So then you'll be happy to know that this month's figurine collection is Ram from ReZero in a really cute Halloween version outfit. Absolutely adorable. Just a really, really solid figurine for your collection. Add that shit to the waifu pile, boy. And you'll be happy to know that I am giving away this Rem Halloween version figurine to one lucky viewer watching this video right now with the box signed, as always, by your boy. All you have to do is follow three very simple steps, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the link down in the description below to enter the free giveaway. And at the end of the giveaway period, one lucky viewer will be selected at random, and the signed box figurine of Ram Halloween version will be shipped off to you guys. So if you're interested in that, again, click the link down in the description below and good luck to the participants. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this month's monthly Otago collection. Thank you for joining in until the very end. But of course, a very special extra thank you to you lovely $50 patrons for this month. Crescentia, Lucy First, Alex Thompson, Hiro Gore, Haruka Takahashi, Figgle Mighty, 
Brown Eyes Black Dragon, Ali Elman, Neprut, JM, April J, Royal Fox, and Black Yuko. Thank you for your guys' support. And by the way, for every single patron, from all the way down from $3 up to $50, can check out this month's super secret Q&A time over on my Patreon right now. It is a Q&A series that I do specifically for my patrons, where I answer every single one of your guys' questions. So if you would like to join in on that for next month, or get your hands on some great rewards and support your boy, then make sure to go over to my Patreon on patreon.com slash the anime man links down in the description below of course it is not mandatory in any way completely optional if you can't support me on there that is completely fine i appreciate you guys for just sticking around watching the video giving me a couple of minutes of your time but patreon is the best place to support me so if you would like to do that again links down in the description below check it out but again if you want more of my content then i am uploading very frequently now over on my second channel joey i'll leave that down in the description below thank you again to 400,000 subscribers for that let's go up to half a mil baby but i hope you guys have a wonderful safe Halloween. If you do enjoy your horror manga or anime, let me know down in the comments below what are your suggestions for some great horror anime, great horror manga, great horror movies, TV shows. It can be anything, honestly. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll be really interested to find out. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Like and favorite if you enjoy. Subscribe for anime banter. Keep watching anime. Done it!